Should you stop drinking coffee? Coffee is one of the most widely consumed beverages in the world and its comforting taste and caffeine boost are relied on by so many people. But coffee is actually pretty controversial. There are certain health benefits to drinking coffee, but it could also have some risk factors. So today we're going to be looking at all of the pros and cons of coffee so that you can see whether you want to keep on drinking coffee or if you should switch to something else like tea. So first we're going to look at the pros, so the health benefits of coffee. So coffee has lots of nutrients, but it's important to note that the quantities are so low that it will only have an impact if you drink multiple cups a day. And those nutrients are B vitamins, magnesium, manganese, potassium. However, it's the antioxidant content in coffee that actually really makes a difference. In fact, a study found that a lot of people got their main antioxidant source from coffee rather than from fruit and vegetables. Let's keep in mind that this is likely because they aren't consuming enough fruit and vegetables, but still important to note. And if you're interested in the sources for everything I'm going to be saying, then you can check them out in my blog post that I will be putting in the description. Antioxidants are super important for your body and they have tons of health benefits and mainly they help your cells fight against free radicals, which can be very damaging. And if you're interested interested in learning more about them and their benefits and know which foods you can find them in besides coffee, then you can check out the video I made about that right here. Another big pro of coffee, and this is the one that most people use it for, is that it helps reduce tiredness and makes your brain more alert. Caffeine is a stimulant and it can improve alertness, cognitive function, and vigilance. Adenosine is a neurotransmitter in your body which slows down neural activity and makes you drowsy and tired and sleepy. And what caffeine does is that it inhibits these adenosine receptors so that the neurotransmitter cannot go on its receptors and therefore it cannot make you feel sleepy. I mean, you won't be able to feel sleepy. So this is why caffeine can really make you more alert and awake and this is why so many people rely on their cup of coffee in the morning. But studies have also shown that these effects may be short term because a lot of people build up a tolerance to this and the stimulant effect no longer really works afterwards. Another great health benefit of coffee is that it may help protect you against certain diseases. Studies have shown an inverse association between drinking coffee and developing Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease. This means that people who drink coffee had less chances of developing the disease. Studies also show that drinking coffee could help reduce your risk risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And coffee drinkers also have a lower risk of developing liver diseases such as cirrhosis and especially alcoholic cirrhosis and liver cancer. And coffee consumption is also associated with a reduced risk of developing colorectal cancer, kidney cancer, or premenopausal breast cancer. Another pro of coffee is that it can help with depression. Studies have actually shown that the risk of depression decreased when the quantity of caffeinated coffee consumption increased. A study also showed that people who drank four cups of coffee a day had a lower risk for depression than people who drink only one cup a day. Now let's look at the cause of coffee or why coffee is bad for you potentially. So first of all, coffee can cause anxiety because like I mentioned before, coffee is a stimulant and while that may have some beneficial effects, it also has the downsides, which is that it can increase anxiety, heart rate, heart palpitations, and may exacerbate like psychotic behaviors in patients that already have these issues. And a study showed that if you consumed coffee during your teens, then it could increase your chances of having anxiety related issues later on. But it's important to note that there was an other study that showed that there was no association between coffee or tea and anxiety issues. Another problem with coffee is that it can disrupt sleep. Again, it's pretty logic. It's also a pro of coffee that it can keep you awake, but the con is that it can disrupt sleep when you don't want it to, when you actually want to sleep. If you have caffeine three hours or less before your bedtime, it will decrease your sleep time, your sleep quality, and your deep sleep time. It's really recommended not to drink coffee at least six hours before your before you go to bed. Also, people who reported having low qualities of sleep 
drank more caffeine than those who had better sleep quality. But of course, this could be the other way around. They could be consuming coffee because they have trouble sleeping. Like, you know, it's kind of a chicken or egg situation. Another con is that coffee can lead to caffeine addiction and even withdrawal symptoms. Caffeine is a very cherished stimulant, but when you start consuming caffeine regularly, you get accustomed to it, you get used to it, and you start needing more and more caffeine to have the same stimulant effect. You can become dependent on it to feel energized and clear-headed. And if you, for some reason, don't have access to caffeine, then you can start to feel withdrawal symptoms, such as headaches, fatigues, drowsiness, tiredness, etc. Another problem with coffee is that it can cause high blood pressure. Caffeine has been shown to to raise blood pressure levels because it stimulates the nervous system. And when your blood pressure is too high, it can damage your arteries and it can interfere with having a correct blood flow and this is a risk factor for a heart attack. So caffeine does increase the blood pressure, but it remains controversial on whether or not it increases the chances for coronary heart disease because caffeine's effect on blood seems to be temporary. Another con of coffee is that it could really put your body under stress. Caffeine is considered to be a pharmacological substance and it increases cortisol and adrenaline levels both at, during rest and also during stress. Cortisol is a hormone that is usually released under stress. So basically drinking coffee is kind of recreating a stressful situation for your body in that you don't, don't need to be going through, so. And also coffee can cause digestive issues. Coffee stimulates bowel movements and can cause diarrhea and caffeinated coffee increases colon activity 23 times percent more than non-caffeinated coffee. Coffee also promotes gastroesophageal reflux and gallbladder contraction. And in several studies, people with IBS, so irritable bowel syndrome, have associated coffee with their symptoms. So to sum up, here are the pros and cons of coffee kind of summed up. There have also been a few questions about whether or not unfiltered coffee can raise your cholesterol levels and also affect your thyroid function, but nothing really clear has been said on the matter yet, so we'll have to see. As with many things, there is actually no clear answer on whether you should drink coffee or not. It's up to everyone to make their own risk analysis balance and it also depends on whether you actually enjoy coffee or not. Personally, I don't drink coffee on a regular basis, but I do have it on occasion when I feel like I really need this extra boost. So it's obviously up to everyone to find their personal balance and what works for them because we are all different, of course. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like it and subscribe and see you on my next one. Bye.